I for some reason get get uh, cast as a guy who's probably not as as smart as he should be. And just I'm, a I'm testament to your something. acting ability. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is David Stark from Watcher Pass, and today I'm talking to David Sullivan, who plays Ted in Monuments, which released already. It released on August 3rd on VOD and Digital. We're going to talk to him in just a second, but first, let's check out the trailer. And while you're watching, if you could like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. He's been doing the exact same thing for weeks, carrying her ashes everywhere with him like a freaking weirdo. I've been seeing her. Laura. She's gone, man. You've got to do what we need to do to put her to rest and move on. What? I want to report a stolen car. Bro, shampoo. From the scatter you were, we were the happiest. I'm lost. Or my ashes are anyway, and my whole family wants you arrested. Bro, shampoo. Um, I'm sorry about that too, right now. I can't do anything with sorry. Action, Ted. Let's go. <laughs> david hey david how are you i'm doing well how are you i'm well thank you so much for having me oh, thank you for thank you for joining this is uh david sullivan who plays ted in monuments which is out now it came out on august 3rd on vod and digital absolutely go see it it's 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 a movie that's going to really um, give you peace and comfort, uh, you know, on your, on your journey through, uh, life and grief and loss and death. And, and in a weird way might even make you smile and, and feel better about your, you know, your journey. Yeah. In a very weird way. I mean, the film is very quirky. There's a lot of very funny kind of ridiculous scenes, but yeah, I mean, you're right. Like there's this underlying heart throughout it. And then towards the end, there are some, some very emotional scenes, which I, I liked a lot, but, uh, the journey itself is, it's a little different, but Hey, you know, it's, it's fun. It's a fun, quirky indie film. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. I, 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 you know, it, it's funny because I, I think when, when writers write and directors de direct, you don't, you don't really have uh, an idea. I mean, you have an idea, but you don't really, you're not really certain of the movie that you're making. You're hopefully you make a movie that you like. And if it's a movie that you like, then you have to think that there are other people out there who, who like the same kind of stuff. So we didn't really set out to make a, a quirky indie movie. We set out to make a movie, you know, about a guy going through loss. And, mm -hmm. and it's really funny because like some of us weren't even on the same page when we started shooting and we would rehearse scenes. And I'd be like, wait, is this a sad scene or is this a goofy scene? Like I was usually the one in the wrong. I was usually the one that's like, wait, I just lost my wife. Why am I smiling here? Why am I laughing here? Why? Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, th th I got to give all that credit to Jack because he had such a specific vision and he had such a, a great idea of this, of, 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 you know, the, the story that he wanted to tell. And I think it wasn't until post that, you know, the story was evolving into something that, that, that I couldn't have even predicted. But I think that's actually kind of perfect that you yourself were, was kind of confused because that kind of fits with your character. There's some very strange scenes that, you know, just are kind of atypical so that probably actually worked out in your favor that you were a little bit off as well so yeah a hundred percent i mean uh, you know i mean what would you do when you when you see the per the love of your life and you know she's dead but she's standing right in front of you it's like wait am i crazy or what uh, you're really there like i can touch you i can i what i so yeah i uh i i i i, I find myself kind of landing these roles where the guy's not as um as uh as has the same mental uh <laughs> capacity as i would i would want to have i i I, I, I I for some reason get get uh cast as a guy who's probably not as as smart as he should be and just I'm, a I'm testament to your acting ability <laughs> that's right that's right that's right <laughs> so i guess yeah the first thing the first question we should go back to the beginning how did you find this film how did you kind of get involved and is it because you look very much like jack c newell <laughs> I mean, I, I take that as a huge compliment. Um, no, I, I, I think um, I think Jack may have seen some of my work before and was was interested in working with me. And uh, he reached out and, and I, I was actually out of town at the time. And we uh, we had a couple meetings on Skype and uh, he sent me the script. And I had a bunch of questions because mainly about the tone. 
and mainly about, you know, why was this story important for him to tell? Because he had just come off like an award-winning documentary. Uh, he, he had some really uh, neat director jobs uh, in Chicago at the time. And I was like, why, why this story now? And, and he had dealt with loss with his brother, uh, you know, years prior. And he just felt like it was a story that needed to be told. And, and uh, I'm, I'm really fortunate that he, you know, he thought that I was the guy to do it. Yeah, no, definitely. That's uh, I, I talked to him earlier, and there, there's definitely this film was a way to kind of process some of the loss that uh, that he had before. And I loved mm-hmm. hearing your you know back and forth with him when you're trying to kind of prepare. So you know, you had conversations with him. Were there any of the things you did to prepare? Did you uh, go out in the wilderness or or break yeah, into a museum no, I mean, or something? I, or? I, yeah, I I I had lost my my father, uh, you know, seven or eight years before that. No, seven or eight years now, I guess it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, I'd lost my father and, and I, I never really felt like I did it right. I never really felt like I, there were days where I was like, did I cry enough? Or like, did I, did I cry too much? Like, was I weak at the funeral? Or was I strong? Did I stand up for my father? Like, was I there for my family? Like, I questioned my own grieving process. And uh And in reading this script, I was like, oh, what is this guy doing? And I'm like, oh, he's doing what he thinks he's supposed to be doing. And there's really no supposed to. Everybody has their own journey. And so I liked, you know, I I liked, you know, towards the end that he realized, oh, I needed to go on this journey in order to, to, to realize what was the most important. And what was the most important was us being where we were the happiest. And that's, you know, at home in the creek behind our house. Yeah, exactly. And I think you, you hear that all the time and it's tough to really appreciate that until it actually happens, but there's no right way to grieve, right? Like right. everyone grieves in a very different way. So, right. Yeah. Um, and so you mentioned a little bit, some of the ridiculousness, like you, you kind of weren't sure if this was a serious scene or a funny scene. Like, how did you keep a straight face in some, you know, you're like, you're, you're in there with this guy in a sheepskin, like cowboy hat. And then this, mm-hmm. you know, angry sister and, and, a, and a cop. <laughs> like, how did you kind of keep your straight face during some of these scenes? I mean, you know, it, it, Jack just gave us such freedom. I mean, he, he gave us such freedom to kind of explore. And, and sometimes I was cut off guard. And sometimes mm-hmm. there, there are a couple scenes where I, I, I was hoping that they had a take where the corners of my mouth weren't turning up because I specifically remember like, did we get that? Like I was just laughing the whole time on the inside. Um, But that's, what's, that's, what's fun about being an actor. Like we, you know, uh, what we do for a living is put ourselves into the different fictional created circumstances and, and, and try to tell the story truthfully through, you know, a different point of view. And sometimes I was laughing and I didn't know if it was appropriate or not, but sometimes we use those takes. So (laughs) uh, that's kind of the beauty of what it is that we do as actors. We, we kind of allow ourselves to be surprised. Yeah. And it's also a nice thing about, you know, this film's kind of shifting tone or maybe kind of a, you know, moving tone. You you could have a scene where you're laughing during a serious moment and it fits perfectly, or you could have been very serious and it would have been fun. That's exactly right. Um, I also really liked some of the banter, you know, between you and, and your wife, who's played by uh, Margaret Moreau, or, or you and Javier. Like, mm-hmm. was that scripted, kind of improv, somewhere in between? Most of it was was completely scripted. I mean, oh. that's that's you know, when you sign on as an actor, you you know, you have those questions, and you're like, you know, how much room is there to improvise? How much room do we have to kind of find the scene? But you know. In a, a, after asking that question, I, I, I realized pretty early on that, oh, we don't need to improvise like this. This is very well written <laughs> like this. If we just allow, you know, our characters to, 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 to tell the story that's already written for us, I think we'll have some magical moments. And and we certainly did. I mean, they they I mean, it, it certainly helps when when you're working with somebody who's been in the business for, you know, 30 years with Marguerite and 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 with with you know Javier like he he was Hamilton on Broadway for 3 years like these are people who have acting chops like i i sometimes felt like okay well if i suck in this scene then i know that you know i know that they're not going to suck so <laughs> so as long as i have them around me then there's i could really do no wrong yeah that's that's good to have that kind of a support yeah. around you yeah um one thing i was wondering so you spend 
uh, maybe like a third or a quarter of the movie with you know one arm sleeve removed. I think it was your left arm. Mm-hmm. Like how how much did you work out that one arm just for those scenes? Like <laughs> do we would noticeably morph tone I, on one side. The one arm put the one arm uh, pull ups <laughs> that I did all the time. I, I wanted to make sure that that and 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 the tan. Yeah, and was there. I, I didn't want anything to pull focus from uh, from my my face, so I made sure <laughs> that it, that my arm looked good. It was nice and tan, and it just kind of fit. No, if that were the case, uh, it would stand out because yeah. there's not a, a tan patch of skin anywhere on my body. I'm I'm completely <laughs> white. Then I'll get sunburned, and then I peel, and then I'm white again. Um, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then one other thing, I, 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 maybe I mispronounced it, but I thought maybe Anubis was mispronounced. Was that intentional or, or do, am I saying it wrong? Is it actually supposed to be, I think it was like Anubis, Anubis. or, yeah. Well, that, that was something that both, both, uh, both pronunciations are considered correct huh? because uh-huh. I, when I was talking to Jack, he was like, what if you say it wrong? It's, it's not, I mean, as long as he thinks it's right, like, and I'm like, Really? Like, because my actor brain, I'm like, oh, well, you know, I teach this stuff. I should know how it's pronounced. And he's like, what if you don't? And so, yeah, I, I actually don't know. I don't know if I said it right or wrong. I know that, that uh, there were multiple takes where I said it different ways, but actually I don't remember. Did I say Anubis or did I say Anubis or what did I say? I think- I think it was Anubis. It sounded off. So I think it was Anubis. Oh, I, well, a hundred percent. I meant to do it. I, I, it was a character choice and maybe he was off that day. And so I wanted to uh, tell that I wanted to portray that story to the audience that, you know what, maybe I'm a little off that day. That, that makes perfect sense. I like how those students, purpose. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just perfect preparation. That's right. <laughs> Uh, so I know we have limited time, so I'd like to jump. I call it the lightning round. It's just very lightweight questions about the film and things that happen in the film. See how your experiences map to them. You can feel free not to answer any of them. I, I won't be offended, but I try to keep okay. them very answerable. What is your go-to pineapple drink? Mai Tai. Mai Tai. That's a good choice. Uh, have you ever gotten in a fist fight and did you win? Yes. And yes and well i i grew up on the mean streets of east texas so small town you know there's not much going on i i I, yeah i won i probably won more than i lost but as an adult like as a as a no it's probably been maybe 20 years but i know what i'm doing i can handle myself all right that's that that's what we got from the movie (laughs) uh have you ever decided something with a coin flip Hmm. I don't think I don't think I've de- uh, no I don't think I've decided anything um, major. I think it's just like uh, should I stop at this gas station or can I roll the dice and go six more miles and I'm like flip a coin. But yeah, nothing that, major. That, I mean, if you can, if you can roll the dice, that's that's a pretty major decision. For you because to like, stop. what if you can? What if you only have three miles of gas left? Yeah. And all of a sudden, yeah, you're halfway. stuck on the, side of the highway. Fortunately, I've I've chosen correctly every time. Perfect. Or I guess uh, the I think, point is. I think your background, you probably answered this already, but, uh, you know, I, I really liked Javier's character. So oh, go ahead. Oh. Have you ever worn a cowboy hat in everyday life? Absolutely. I'm from, I'm from, like I said, I'm from East Texas. And so I, uh, yeah, cowboy hat and boots. I, I wore that quite a bit growing up. And, and actually when I go back home to Texas, I work on a ranch. So. Oh, very nice. I do that quite a bit. Sheepskin jacket too, just like Javier? Uh, it's been a while since I've worn a sheepskin <laughs> jacket. <laughs> That's what you have, which is awesome. I have. Yeah, absolutely. And I love it. It's, it's like you, you have non-ironically, because like I've worn cowboy hats, but that's like to a party, not like right. I'm actually going to do cowboy work. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, no, I, I doing cowboy work. I wear a cowboy hat. Very nice. Uh, so if you were a professor, what subject would you teach? Mm. Uh, gosh, I don't know. Probably something that I would feel like I needed to learn. <laughs> probably psychology just because there's so much about it that I don't know and I don't understand and I have yet to really teach myself enough of it so I often find that I teach or I share with people what it is that I need to learn and I want to learn more about why people do the things that they do that's it's a very good answer very introspective I like that sounds like maybe yeah. you already have a little psychology in you cool um what have you ever been kicked college and what? see if there's an opening yeah, there you go. Have you ever been kicked out of a museum? Better question is, have I ever been, have I ever been to a museum? <laughs> um, no, I've never been kicked out of a museum. Um, yeah, and it's been a while since I've actually been to a museum. 
I mean, I think it's been a while since a lot of us have been to any big public <laughs> places. So that's yeah, not exactly. Surprise. Exactly. Um, so you have 25 cents for a jukebox. Uh, you throw it in. What song do you pick? Ooh. Ooh. That's a good one. I think maybe I'd play some old Hank Williams. I'm not sure what song I would have. It, it would obviously depend. I don't think the any jukeboxes now will, will have many choices but i think it'd probably have to be a hank williams song yeah it also probably depends on where you are right like you're right. in east texas exactly. that might be different than uh in that's la right. that's yeah. right that's right um and uh, last question is where, where do you want your ashes spread man i don't know uh i don't know i i i think i would want I would want my family to get in an airplane and just dump them somewhere in a plane, not in the plane, but I want them all to be in an airplane. And like, I don't know, I would, I would want it to be an adventure um, because I don't think we've all been in an airplane together, but somewhere cool. I don't know. I think I would just want my family to enjoy the, the, the process. Yeah. Um, yeah I don't know. It's a good question. You want it to be like a fun it. experience, not like a yeah. sad experience. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Just like just like your character in the in the film. Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, so the film is out already, and, and I know you're promoting it, and I know you're already filming other things. So uh, I guess now that the film is out, what's uh, what's next for you? What can people look forward to? And also, how can they find you on social media? Yeah, and like I'm at David Sullivan uh, on Twitter and uh, on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I just finished, uh, I just wrapped season two of The Wilds, which is uh, on Amazon Prime. And that's going to be coming out uh, probably early next year. Season two, you can catch season one now. Uh, and I have two films that um, one is closing up. It's kind of festival circuit uh, this month uh, called um, uh, Small Town, Wisconsin. And then I have another film called The Big Bend, which will uh, start going on the festival route towards the, um, towards the beginning of next year. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. This is David Sullivan, who stars in Monuments, which is out right now. It's on VOD. Uh, it came out August 3rd, 2021. And thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, David. Have a good one. Awesome. Thank you. That was David Sullivan talking about Monuments, which is out now. It's released uh, on August 3rd on VOD and digital. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.